Congressman, I'd like you to talk a little bit about how you become or how you continue to be a diverse national voice. As you know, I think you're down to 15 seats in the east, northeast region. You're outnumbered two to one in the west. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think there are no African American members in your caucus. How do you get those diverse voices back and how do you hear those voices without that kind of representation in the caucus? Uh, I I think your, your, your point is well taken. We need to uh, double up in terms of our efforts to go out, reach out um, with an inclusive effort uh, to try and bring folks in to hear what it is that we're about. And again, most of this country is a center-right country. They are not in the extremes on either side. And so it is these kitchen table issues that people worry about. Again, how are they going to deal with this incredible diminution in the value of their 401k? How do they deal with the prospects of a secure retirement if, if someone, no matter what, what skin color they are, no matter what religion they are or nationality they are, as an American citizen, how do people deal with the challenges they face now in terms of governing their lives? With the type of solutions based on our common sense conservative uh, principles that have made the Republican Party uh, what it is and uh, has been throughout its history. Continue the conversation and ask you about a point that you brought up. Congressman Christopher Shays, the only Republican in the House from, the, uh, from New England, he's now out of office. Is there room in a so called big tent for these moderate Republicans? I think there is, and I think this team uh, has the ability to reach out to them. I mean, certainly John Boehner has shown that ability. Uh, Eric Cantor, I think, would. Uh, the others, I'm sure, will. But the problem is, will they hear those voices? And those voices are not going to be in the room. They're not going to be in those closed-door meetings. Who is going to speak for the Northeast, the industrial Midwest, the black community? Uh, there's no one left, and that makes me wonder how are they going to sensitize themselves to those concerns. The numbers have shrunk and the people who are left are more and more conservative. The guy who they just elected as their campaign committee chairman, whose job it is to go recruit people to run in the Northeast, is Pete Sessions, a very conservative member from Texas. Uh, he, may, he may surprise us. He may be great at recruiting moderates to run in uh, my hometown, hometown area of suburban Philadelphia where I grew up. Maybe he will be that person. But first blush, it doesn't look that way. It looks as if they've moved a little bit further to the right. That helps John Boehner retain his position as minority leader. But what does it do about growing the party? I don't know. We'll have to see. But I, there's something else here, and it's the same reason any business wants to have a diverse organization, whether they want to have young and old, men, women, black, white, Hispanic, etc. Who is going to be in the room to talk about the problems of people in Bridgeport, Connecticut, or suburban Boston, and suburban Cleveland? Chris Shays represented Bridgeport. Bridgeport has a lot of poverty. It has a lot of urban problems. Where is that voice in the closed-door meeting, in the caucus? We'll, we'll be watching that. I'm not sure. It, it's just not there the way it was.